we're all kind of um, reminiscing and just thinking about someone who has been a constant in our lives, someone we all uh, kind of looked up to for her dedication. But how would you describe kind of the mood and kind of figuring out what her legacy was? Well, morning, Becky, and, and great to be here. And it's a really sad day in Britain, as you can imagine. Uh, I think, you know, most people have grown up with the Queen. And if you think about it, it's very unusual for business leaders to weigh in on heads of state like that. And, of course, the Queen really epitomised the most extraordinary leadership values of Brand Britain, uh, extraordinary discipline, never complained, never explained, resisted, uh, the vanity of media, and really kept her opinions to herself. So you often didn't know what she was thinking at really important times and worked incredibly hard, not only opening factories and attending all sorts of ceremonies that many, perhaps minor royals, might find boring. But, you know, up until two days before her death, she was welcoming in the new prime minister, Liz Truss, yeah, I, I think that in itself is just so much change for the UK this 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 week to have a new prime minister and now a new monarch. Um, this is coming at a pretty troubling time too. Huge inflation costs, huge issues with energy costs, lots of questions about what comes next. What is the concern among Britons at this point? Yeah, great question. And I think, you know, Liz Truss is the fourth prime minister in six years, which is extraordinary for Britain. All conservative prime ministers, but an Italian-like uh, style of change. So the Brits are not really used to that, though it's fair to say that King Charles, as we should now call him, has had the longest apprenticeship in history uh, for this job. So he does know what it requires. Uh, there's been some criticism, oh, goodness, he's going to be a meddlesome king, he's going to be an activist king. But he sat at the shoulder of his mother for the last 73 years, knowing that at some point he would be taking over. And what's fascinating is that the causes that made him seem perhaps 30 years ago, 40 years ago, as eccentric are now the causes that very much resonate with people, especially young people, so climate change, organic food, architecture that's sympathetic to the environment. So I do think he will be uh, a much more capable king than people perhaps have been uh, expecting. His mother, the Queen, was a great uniter through all types of crises. Will King Charles be able to unite the country the same way? Well, I do think he's watched. I mean, literally, he's had the longest apprenticeship in history. I mean, he's taking over the job at 73, which is, you know, eight years beyond the mandatory age for retirement. Uh, and I think he very much wants to be a unifier. Uh, the Guardian uh, at one point asked for all his letters that he'd ever sent uh, to government ministers, I think in the hope of trying to expose him as being meddling behind the scenes. And in fact, what what came out after 10 years of them inquiring was a very thoughtful man, incredibly well informed, uh, really just trying to raise questions about issues that he knew were important to the British uh, public. So, you know, as long as he stays out of uh, real political interference, I think he'll be fine. And there's no question that he wants to be a unifier. And interestingly, the Queen uh, did say earlier this year that she wanted Camilla who at the time was known as Princess Consort, to be known as Queen Consort, right. so that he would have support from Camilla when he ascended the throne. And you've got to imagine what a strange life that your career depends upon the death of, in his case, his mother. So the whole time he's been waiting to ascend the throne, but at the same time he knew that would come when his mother died. We, we all know about the Queen's... Uh, long international diplomacy skills. Um, she met with 13 of 14 presidents under her reign um, and is known the world over. W what would you say her economic legacy is to Joanna? Well, her economic legacy was, I think, really in um, being the face of Grand Britain. I'm not sure she had any specific economic legacy other than to represent Britain as a fair and honest and decent place to do business. And 
as the face of the Commonwealth and the realms, she was hugely admired. And I do think that's been very helpful to Britain. And it's hard to see that Britain will maintain that sense of relevance on the world stage that it has managed to do. I mean, it really does kick above its weight in terms of influence. And it's really, you know, I think it's a very worrying time for the country, the changeover in, in prime ministers, lack of continuity, a tremendous internal strife. It makes it look much harder for Britain for the next few Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.